David Foster Wallace figured out why so many modern authors are struggling to achieve the literary success that they want. And I've been reading David Foster Wallace for the past 12 years, and one of the biggest things that he taught me is that you should be writing longhanded more. And I get it. I am addicted to my computer. It is so fun to write on a computer. You can blow through drafts. You can delete, look up stuff on thesaurus.com and so many other cool things, especially if you're using a program like Scrivener. But that's exactly the problem because a lot of the time, especially for beginning and intermediate writers, we need to slow down. Going fast is not okay, especially in that initial unconscious phase where we are getting ideas down because David Foster Wallace is not alone. People like Neil Gaiman, Stephen King, Ernest Hemingway, Joyce, Joyce Carol Oates, all write long-handed in their initial couple drafts. And if you guys don't already know, Write Conscious is the headquarters of David Foster Wallace content on YouTube. So check the playlist down below for a bunch of videos on Wallace and subscribe if you are interested. So now let us hear from Wallace about writing long-handed. Well, well, the first two or three drafts are always long-hand. Yeah, only because I went through the school where they made me write a lot and it was right before computers became ubiquitous. And I just find that it makes me... I can type very much faster than I can write. And writing makes me slow down in a way that helps me pay attention. Like, is the clause that I just, does this make sense? What I just said? Which is very difficult, at least to me. To keep in mind when I'm actually writing the thing, unless something slows me down. For what I would consider caviar work, like my own work, that's really important to me, yeah. But that's a device that I picked up as a sophomore in college, where I ha had these philosophy classes where you had to turn in five-page papers once a week. And I just found that I couldn't do it unless I recopied it several times because there was just too much different stuff to think about. And writing long-handed is a spiritual activity. If you've ever tried to journal on a computer, it doesn't feel as good as writing long-handed. And a lot of the logic bros are going out there are going to scream at this idea. But your handwriting and language in general is a spiritual thing. And there is a great book on this called Your Handwriting Can Change Your Life by Vilma Love Rogers. And you get my you guys may be like, wait, handwriting analysis, all that stuff, that's some pseudoscientific BS, Ian. And maybe it is, but David Foster Wallace, speaking of handwriting analysis, broke the number one rule of handwriting analysis, which in retrospect could have helped people see that he was on the way to eventually committing suicide. And what do I mean by this? Well, Brian A. Garner, David Foster Wallace's friend and fellow author, wrote about this strange thing that Wallace did. Well, at both of our dinners in Bloomington and then in LA, I took a few books for David to sign. On all six of them, he did something that made me uncomfortable. He crossed out his name on the title page and wrote it in himself. I almost said something to him about it, to remark on what the crossing out meant to me, but I refrained. It seemed in inappropriately luxurious, and it was surely a false notion I'd harbored since adolescence. You see, at the age of 14 or 15 in Amarillo, I discovered a book on handwriting analysis. Within a few months, I had a pretty well memorized the book along with my childhood friend, J.P. Allen, and the two of us were constantly asked to analyze our classmates and others' handwriting. Occasionally, we'd even be paid for it, although I'd never put too much stock in its particular conclusions. I've always believed that some of the broader generalizations might hold true. In any event, the crossing out made me uncomfortable because what that's supposed to suggest. Many people sign their names and then loop back through them as if to underline or to cross out, cross out or two, but instead mark directly through their names. This unpleasant happen is said to, to indicate self-destructiveness or suicidal tendencies. So I've never liked seeing my own name crossed out by me or anyone else. In David's case, I particularly dislike the loop delete mark that proofreaders use. I chalked up my discomfort to superstition and decided to say nothing. David was a famous writer, and this doubtless and doubtless this was his habitual way of inscribing his books. Indeed it was. A quick look at Google image, Images confirms that he always signed his books this way. And if we look at some examples, there's the crossed out name. And here is a copy that Wallace signed for David, or excuse me, Mr. Brian Garner with his name crossed out once again. And if you talk to Logic Bro Ian, you know, a long time ago, everyone, I was into existentialism and nihilism and logic. I was getting philosophy degrees. I was like a lot of my commenters out there. And if someone told me about handwriting analysis and changing your handwriting to unlock something within, I would have laughed at them. But years later, when I when I opened myself up a little more, I was looking at my handwriting and I didn't look how I didn't like how it looked. I've never had that great of handwriting, and I wanted to make it better. So I got this book that I just showed you guys. Your handwriting can change your life, and in it she connects 
how you write not just your letters and words, but how you do your margin if you write online or online paper and all these different things to certain aspects of your mentality, of your personality. And as a teacher who has read thousands of students' work and knows them on a personal level, the broad generalizations like Garner is saying most of the time are true. We can get into the weeds about, you know, if you write a you in this certain way, it doesn't make, are you a depressed person or, or all of that? But there is no logic behind this. This is one of these things that you just have to experience and see. And that's why the name of this channel is Write Conscious, everybody, because what we are trying to do here, what my goal is, is for more people to write consciously, to write things that can change the world. If you're going to be doing something, if you're going to write a novel or write a book or even journal, it should be leading toward transformation and growth. We don't need to be regressing. And one of the biggest things things stopping us from doing that, first of all, is moving too fast, thinking that we need to do it. Hey, you're already 35 and you're not a famous author, so you need to move fast. No, you need to slow down and think in 10 or 15 years, maybe I can create a masterpiece. And if I do that, I'll be better than 99% of people because when writers and artists in general put too much pressure on themselves, they falter, they start to slow down. I've done this before. I've done little or no to no creative work for two or three years before because I was putting way too much pressure on myself. And when we look at language and writing, we've actually been constrained. As I talked about in yesterday's video about David Foster Wallace on the passive voice, there are these rules that we are told. Don't you know? start your sentence with conjunctions. Don't use the passive voice. Don't do this. And these things are ingrained within, in us at a very deep level because it's connected to language and how we express ourselves and also to educational trauma that a lot of us experience in school. Because when you're going through puberty and you're trying to make your way through the world and there may be bullies or power structure games going on, it's actually a very vital time. And a lot of people take their writing habits from high school and continue them and those rules and continue on with them for the rest of their life, even if they are real writers. And even worse, there are the subtle things that we don't do. For instance, why the hell do we write on lined paper? I stopped writing on lined paper seven or eight years ago, and it's the biggest thing, biggest change I've made in my creative life that's had a positive impact. It's even better than meditation and doing like a couple pages of journaling every day, not being constrained on lined paper, and even crazier, turning a vertical piece of paper and writing on a blank horizontal piece of paper changed my entire life, like beyond fiction writing. Because we've been constrained by lines, by rules, and even from to let our own handwriting grow. You know, your handwriting may have been taught to you by some random ass person in third grade, and now you've stuck with it. Did you determine and choose your own style of writing? And all of this is to say that when you are starting your writing journey, most of the time it's good to write things down, especially certain scenes. If you are a computer jockey, and I actually miss, I think, this page from the Wallace quote, and let's let's just read it again, quote, if I didn't. I don't know whether that would be helpful to anyone else, particularly computer jockeys. I don't know how they would really do it. My students have never successfully explained it to me. I don't think they do I don't think they do drafts actually, which doesn't mean that the be the better of them don't go back, look, tweak, move stuff around, add stuff and take stuff out. What is a draft to them isn't necessarily a draft to me. And this is 100% correct. This is why when I see people like you know, submitting their short stories or like reading their work. I'm like, how many drafts did you really put into this? Because a draft is a total reworking of it all. Like looking at not just every single word, but how it relates to the contrast of everything else and starting to layer and, and what it all means at a bigger level. And when you have something like a novel, that may take years to finish. And to do it well and to revise well also takes a very skilled and intellectual and creative person to be able to feel what needs changing. And so a lot of the time people, and especially students, don't do drafts. A, a draft isn't looking at your computer and being like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna make some changes here. This doesn't sound right. There's a typo there. That's not redoing a draft. That's doing some copy editing. And my personal system of writing is I kind of alternate between. Sometimes I just need to get some stuff out, but I always, no matter what, and everyone should have a personal printer if you're a writer. I print the draft and then I revise and I'm tweaking on the page. And I know uh, like Cormac McCarthy, for instance, does this. He would write on the typewriter and then be making margins, marginal notes on his draft and crossing stuff out and stapling more papers in there with kind of some long-handed sentences. And I think that's the way if you want to use a computer, especially for an early draft, to get things done. I feel that way. I've done the 52 short stories in a year challenge where I get one out every year. And it's really hard and like getting that first draft out in a day on the computer really helps because then all you have to do is print it out and just kind of start working on the drafts. So I understand, but the best thing that you can do 
is slow down. And also realize that your connection with language is much more than you think. It's not some dead thing that you can manipulate. How you handwrite, what you're doing, what you, you're putting out there in the world, even at 100% an objective level, has an effect. Even the thoughts you think in, in, you know, affect your actions, which then create ripples in the world. The principle of cause and effect is one of the most important and simple things to understand. And most people don't think it past the level of if I hit the book, book goes boom. But maybe if you really want to get you really woo, if you write online paper or if you do your teas in a certain way or if you strike your name out, you may be actually hurting yourself. And so I would love to hear your thoughts on this. People who have transformed their own handwriting started writing differently. Did it change your life? Did it change your writing just by changing how you wrote? What do you guys think of long-handed drafting, like doing a draft or two of your work? And Wallace does three to five drafts long-handed. What's your perspective on that, especially with something like Infinite Jest? I mean, my God, how long, how, what, what do the notes look like for this? And with all the footnotes and stuff, and, and then compiling that together. And apparently Wallace can only type with two fingers. So we have this guy who is typing with two fingers this whole book out after from these crazy amount of notes and scenes that he's been working on in eight years. Talk about some organization. I mean... I have a, I am looking over here and I have these, these boxes of like old drafts and all these stories and they're not that organized to be able to pull something together like that or be like a Nabokov and be writing on like index cards. That's insane to me, but it's probably the type of person that's OCD enough like that to write something that great. So I will see you guys tomorrow for another video on David Foster Wallace, probably related to how he writes and grammar in general. Peace.